hello namaskar welcome to cloud part shala in today's video we would be looking at aws cli commands for uh, s3 uh, the idea of this video is to get the get everyone familiar with how to read the documentation for aws cli and get started and also how you could write effective queries so that you could get the necessary outputs in the form of text for this let's actually log in to our uh, terminal so this is the terminal that i am using and what we would be doing is uh, checking the CLI version uh, the CLI version that I am using is 2.14.5 how to install AWS CLI on the Windows laptop uh, there is a video in the channel which you could refer and that would also guide you how to set up the credentials for this now if you are looking for any AWS related stuff so what you could do is AWS CLI and you could click on the service that you want to explore with the CLI. I've just typed AWS space CLI space S3 and it has taken me to the AWS CLI page for S3. But if you would like to explore all the services in uh, AWS, you could just click on the AWS option that was there on the top, which is this. If you just click on this hyperlink, it will actually take you to a parent page which will give you a list of all the services that are there which can be used with the CLI. Now, uh, to start with, I would be looking at the S3 option. So, S3 would be alphabetically placed at the bottom. So, this is S3. As you see, there are other S3 related objects as well. So we have S3 API, S3 control, S3 outposts and simply S3. Now S3 is simple storage service in AWS. Uh, it is actually used for uh, saving files in the form of objects. So it is an object based storage which is provided by AWS out of the reach. Now, um, the multiple options that we have in S3 is you could do a list. LS stands for the list object or the list service. RB stands for removing a bucket. MB stands for making a bucket. Sync is for syncing the files from your local folder to the folder that is there on the other syncing files from your local folder to that in S3. So these are all the available commands that you would find at the bottom. So from the very beginning, we have CP, which is for copy. LS stands for listing the MB is for make bucket. MV is for moving the objects for, or renaming the objects. Uh, there's a pre sign. You can remove the bucket and then you could remove uh, the objects with RM command, but also do a sync with this service so let's actually uh, look at the first option which is ls so this would actually help you read or get a list of all the objects that are there inside this now if you do an aws s3 ls which you have already done in the previous example it will give you a list of all the s3 buckets that is there in your account now if you would like to specifically list files which are inside the bucket. So you need to do AWS S3 LS space, then you give S3 colon slash slash, and then you'd give the name of your S3 bucket. And then it will give you a list of all the files and folders that are there inside this. Now, if you're looking something specific, so if you would like to look into inside this folder, so you could do AWS S3 LS, or you could also use the app arrow to go to the previous command and if you could do this this would actually give you the latest stuff now if you would like to look inside infra so that's also possible so you can do this okay so here if you see i actually have two state files that is method one 
dot method three dot tf state and network underscore backend dot tf state. What you could do is let's say you want to copy this file into the current working directory. So I'll just do this. So if you see, I am currently in the directory home mobile xterm and these are the different files that I have on my in my directory. Now, if you would like to copy the file, so you could do AWS S3 LS instead of LS, you could do CP, which is copy. You need to give the source. Now, the source would be your S3 bucket. So, this is the S3 bucket, and then you need to give the name of the file which you exactly want to uh, copy or download, and then you need to give a dot which would actually send or which would actually which actually means the current working directory and if you hit enter so this would actually download the file for you so you should get a prompt saying that the file is downloaded and you get this file so what we could do is uh, because this was network backend so i could open this in vs code and this is the file that i see now let's say you want to send something to the cloud let's say you want to you have run.sh which is this and I want to copy this run.sh file which is on my local desktop or in this current working directory I want to put it in the S3 it's very simple all you need to do is AWS S3 CP and then you need to give the source and then the destination in which you want to keep that I'll copy the previous destination which uh, should be in my clipboard and I just need to put it inside this and here this time you would see that it will give an output as upload and the file would be uploaded so if i do aws s3 ls and then the entire sequence which is this you would see that run.sh file should also be there now i could quickly check this by logging into my aws console so and if i go to s3 and if i take you inside the particular s3 bucket and i guess the batch number was 28 so let's actually go inside that so that is b28 and inside this the infra folder and you will see the run.ss has been kept over here let's say you actually want to create a new folder while you are uploading it so instead of infra i want to call it as scripts and i want to put it over there so basically what is going to happen is the S3 CLI is actually going to create the folder called the scripts which is over here if I could go back to the CPB 28 tag if I go back to the folder and uh, you will see that the script is there so the folder has been created automatically and the run.ss is kept inside this location let's say I would like to delete uh, the file which is there inside the infra right and uh, the command that i could use is aws s3 rm for remove right and then i need to give the file with the folder name and that is run.sh i need to give this and this would actually initiate the delete object and the object or the file inside the infra folder would have, have been deleted so you see that it's not there now but because we have versioning enabled on this bucket you see that the delete marker has been placed and the object has not been permanently deleted yet right so this is how you could delete the objects using the s3 cli now let's say uh let's do some cleanup of the s3 buckets that are there uh, i am definitely not going to use all the s3 buckets so let's actually get rid of few of the s3 buckets that we have now if you see these s3 buckets are not empty right so as soon as you run a delete s3 bucket op operation right so you would be actually getting some errors and let's actually see what those errors are right so this is the s3 bucket which is fine i'll go back and um yep so this is uh, the web test bucket 443 so what I'll do is the command that I need to run this time is AWS S3RB 
that is remove bucket s3 colon this this and then the bucket name and let's see if it is going to clear the bucket or no so it has now said that uh, the remove bucket operation is uh, failed because an error occurred the bucket is not empty so we need to make the bucket empty but if you look at the s3 operations that we had right so there is nothing which says empty the s3 bucket right so that option is not over there so that is where you could then go to the s3 api option wherein you need to check if there is something called as uh, uh, empty the bucket or delete objects so if you see uh, we don't have that so instead what we can then do is you could either use the delete objects uh, api or else what you could use is still the remove object stuff so what i would be first doing is s3 rm the bucket i'll put a star and i'll say recursive let's try and see if it actually deletes the objects or not so i did not get any errors so let's actually do an aws s3 ls on this particular s3 bucket and see if there is anything inside the s3 bucket or not yes there are two files that are there inside the s3 bucket so this looks like it has not deleted the bucket so let's actually try if a dot html works html with star works if not then we would uh, try to get rid of the files individually which should also not be a huge task so that is aws s3 rm this slash error dot html so that should be the delete operation now that it has been deleted i could also do the same thing for index dot html and now that has also been deleted what we could do is use the same rp bucket and we could get rid of the bucket over there so you see that the remove bucket operation has now completed and i should not be able to see this s3 bucket over here so let's refresh the page and see if the s3 bucket is still visible for us or not let's maximize the screens yeah, so the S3 bucket is now very much gone. I could do the same thing for all the other stuff as well. Uh, but then you could always use some automation or do some kind of an automation to get a list of all the objects. Try to empty it from your perspective and then try to get rid of the stuff over there. now uh, let's actually look at the sync command so what we can do is instead of copying individual files to the s3 bucket what we can always do is use aws s3 sync sync again the source in this case it is dot uh, txt or you could just say a dot file and then you could give the name of the folder where that is the s3 bucket where you want to actually paste this stuff so let's actually put it inside this but just keep it inside the slash the cpb28 folder now what is going to happen now is aws is going to sync your current working directory that is the test folder so all the content inside the test folder would be copied to the s3 bucket now let's say there is a new file uh, which is a new file and this is named as name3.txt right if you run the sync command again right so what is going to happen is <coughs> it is going to upload just the new file which has been created that is name.txt would be uploaded to the s3 bucket 
But let's say you want to do the vice versa, wherein you want to sync the S3 bucket, that is the S3 bucket into your current working directory. If you do, if you change the source and destination, what is going to happen in this case is all the files that were already present in your S3 bucket would now be downloaded into your current working directory. So you would probably end up with four or five files as you see over here. So the infra folder has been downloaded where you actually have two terraform.tf state files and then you also have the scripts folder where you have the run.sh file. So this is how using the sync command you could just upload the upload or download the delta. Delta is nothing but files that have were created which are missing in either the source or the destination. So this is the S3 sync command which can be used extensively in real time projects. That's it for this very short video folks. Uh, we would come up with a new video wherein we will be exploring the AWS CLI for EC2 wherein I would be giving you tricks on how to read the JSON and write the query and use the filters in such a way that you are able to extract the data that is needed for us. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please like and share it across. Till then, keep having a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.